Plume 6 on Walnut Gulch. Uh, it's the site where we measure what happens on the upper 36 square miles of the experimental area, or about the upper uh, two-thirds of Walnut Gulch. Uh, all of the water from all the way up in the Dragoon Mountains, uh, as well as from out at the Tombstone Airport, and the area up behind the shop uh, come down through this particular measuring site. The site was selected and we built this flume in 1961 for this particular site. Uh, let me give you a little of the details of the measuring device itself structure along the center line has a 4% slope along that uh, slot there uh, and the 4% uh, is a little bit greater than the natural stream channel itself. So what happens is water entering the flume uh, at the entrance there is accelerated and keeps uh, flowing along the center line in an accelerating mode such that we don't get deposition of the sediment that's in the stream channel itself. Now normal to the center line, the slope on the floor is 1 to uh, 10 at this particular slight. In other words, if you go out from the center line in either direction at uh, a rate of 10 feet, you've raised uh, one foot from the uh, center line itself. So uh, the water that moves down along the center of the flow is accelerated and passes through, uh, excuse the technical detail, uh, a term we call critical depth. And uh, we uh, then accelerate the water and sediment in the downstream direction and keep it accelerating until it passes over the overfall of the flume. Now we measure the depth of flow in the flume at these slotted plates that you see over here uh, down below. Uh, underneath that plate, uh, Mary I don't know if you can see that or not, but underneath that plate is a tunnel that comes to the water level recorder that's over in the uh, stilling well over here. And the water elevation in the center of the flow is measured at the water level recorder in the uh, uh, tunnel back here. So for a particular flow event, if we know the depth of water and knowing what the physics of the measuring site is, we can estimate how many cubic feet per second or cubic meters per second are flowing through the measuring station. Uh, that's a uh, uh, important phenomenon to understand. So if we measure that continuously in time uh, for all of the duration that the flow is moving through the uh, measuring station, we can estimate what the total volume of water is that moves past this measuring site. Now this was the only place on Walnut Gulch where we had 110 volt commercial power available. So we decided to do some work at this particular site uh, to attempt to verify what had been developed as a rating table for the structure uh, in our hydraulic laboratory at Stillwater, Oklahoma. And I mentioned that we uh, worked with those people there to develop the geometry of these uh, measuring devices. So uh, we built then a device, a reinforced concrete beam across the flume uh, similar to what is used in uh, highway overpass construction. And we contracted with a 
uh, pre-stressed concrete firm in Tucson to purchase one of their uh, uh, bridge members uh, and we trucked it down here on a semi tractor trailer with a fifth wheel dragging along behind. He drove it from the Gleason Road crossing just up above here down the channel and got stuck before he got very far as you'd well appreciate and we pushed him in with a D6 bulldozer uh, and got him down to the measuring site where we had a tower crane uh, which was able to reach and grasp the uh, pre-stressed concrete beam and set it on the mounting uh, structures that we had at either end of the uh, station. So they lifted that beam up and set it on the uh, abutments that we poured on either side and we can then <clears throat> get out on the flume and uh, measure with some uh, devices that we subsequently developed. Uh, we had a gantry, if you will, that moves across the flume uh, and has a rod that went down into the flow itself. And on the end of that gantry, we had a transducer, which is an electronic measuring device, uh, that produced uh, an EMF signal, <coughs> which was correlated uh, in a laboratory with the uh, velocity of the water moving past the measuring site. And we used that by traversing across the flow and vertically up and down in the flow to measure the point velocities that were being experienced in the flume. We then related that to what had been measured in the hydraulic laboratory at Stillwater, Oklahoma, and we had some pretty good agreement. This is the only site where we've been able to do that, uh, that monitoring or that verification of what the laboratory prototype uh, told us we were getting by way of uh, discharge. <clears throat> now let me explain a little bit about how we constructed this flume. The flume itself underneath the surface that you see exposed here is made in a honeycomb shape. In other words, if you took the top off, underneath you'd see a honeycomb. People, uh, The structures were one inch thick walls, eight foot openings extending down to the uh, uh, bedded material that we excavated to. So we excavated at the site down to the conglomerate uh, that was exposed with the excavation, cut a concrete or cut a uh, trench into that conglomerate and brought our structure up from that uh, with eight foot square cells and with uh, uh, 12 inch thick openings uh, on the top. Then when we got near the final desired elevation and this took a lot of careful surveying mind you, we extended straight lines from that center line and maintained that 4% slope down through the flume. We extended transverse to that center line uh, on a 1 to 10 foot scale uh, and raised the uh, floor so the floor is a 1 foot thick cap on top of those honeycomb structure underneath. So then we had based in the hydraulic laboratory we had a parabola from the point 15 feet from the entrance to the wraparound over here. We have a parabola 
connected by straight line segments at the floor intercept and at the upper end around through here. For this particular flume and for three of the other flumes, we had concrete forms that we used to configure this geometry that you see here. And the forms uh, were reused, if you will, to build three of the structures, if I'm correct, right, Howard? Uh, and uh, then we would set the forms at the final elevation and support them on uh, screeds that we poured in the finished concrete such that uh, we were able to maintain uh, very accurately the dimensions of our finished geometry that we wanted. For example, we maintained or we attempted to maintain in all three directions, in the X, Y, Z direction, we attempted to maintain structural tolerances of plus or minus a hundredth of a foot. That's about a quarter inch uh, on the uh, geometry. So these are poured very accurately in a scientific method uh, such that we maintained the control analogous to what the models had been built at Stillwater, Oklahoma. The last 10, 20 feet of the measuring structure after the entrance 15 feet, that's the sidewalls are one to one. So one foot horizontal to one foot vertical. Okay. Uh, now a little bit about how we did the, uh, the concrete work. We used uh, an old mixer that we had gotten from uh, Fort Huachuca to uh, do all of our concrete mixing. Howard, uh, what was it? We uh, were able to haul... The old one, the first one here, that was only a sack and a half. Sack and a half mix, so uh, it took us forever uh, uh, to uh, shovel all the material by hand into the mixer uh, add our cement, uh, and we did have a, a small crane which we used to uh, uh, transfer, transpose the material from the concrete mixer into the uh, finished geometry of the uh, at the desired location. Uh, we got a little more elaborate when we get down to the one at the outlet of the watershed. Uh, we were able to get some additional material on surplus from Fort Huachuca and we were able to refine our uh, measurement techniques. This is the one where I developed my first set of calluses. Uh, I was the guy that was expendable so uh, I had to day after day after day shovel the material that was brought down from the approach channel and dumped down next to our concrete mixer uh, where we would then shovel it into the uh, uh, hopper for uh, making our cement. Uh, but you didn't break your leg. As you see, we built some fences in the approach section. Those fences were designed such that they kept the thalweg of the flow directed on the center line of the flume itself. We wanted to keep free of the uh, curve in the approach channel and secondly we wanted to set the overfall such that the flow would not be inundated uh, during a storm event. So we wanted a free overfall, we wanted to be far enough away from the curvilinear in the channel section and we wanted to maintain the total capacity. 